brief message from your friendly neighborhood editing Jordan. We tend to try to keep things pretty PG-13 around here, but this is an improv podcast. So who knows what we're going to say. Sometimes we throw in some swearing, some sexual content, and some violence. So as a general warning, viewer discretion is advised. Also to be noted, the opinions stated about a certain tabletop role-playing game are just that, our opinions. We love the game and we like talking about it. So any criticisms are really just all in good fun. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Hmm. I heard the voice again. (laughs) What voice? We desperately need a name for our insanely popular, except maybe not right now, tabletop game. And I know it's about dungeons, but what else is it about, guys? Help me come up with some mythic creatures that could also be related to dungeons. Um, Hippogriff. Unicorns, maybe? Mm, I think dungeons should be second. I think unicorns and du- no hippogriff mm. no that sucks that sucks that was chimera. a bad suggestion chimera that's so greek what if someone doesn't greek well then i don't know what to tell them chimeras are cool hippogriff mm. i i'm going to kick you out of that window <laughs> defenestration um C- D- dungeons and defenestration could we do that no dungeons has to be second Oh, defenestration and dungeons. That sounds pretty good, but I think it should be a creature. Is there a defenestrating creature out there? I mean, we could make what we could just call... The uh, auto-defenestrator. Like, yeah. Mm. We could just call a monster defenestration. Okay, yeah, I like that. Um, but I feel like it should be like fantasy. So what if we called it like a... Do- Doragon. Doragon. Ooh. What are you dragging on? Huh? What are you dragging it on? No, that's what it's called. It's it's, it's a doctor agon. Doctor octagon. So is it like is yeah. is there like a mad scientist in the dungeon? No, it's just like that's just what that creature does. It just it's just it's a doctor. It's a it's a doragon, doragon, and it defenestrates. It takes them and pick, it makes them go out windows. That's its that's its whole thing. So does the dr stand for doctor or defenestrate? It's a fantasy game. They can decide, you know, the DM. I thought it, I thought we said it the was defenestration VR. master. Guys. <laughs> I don't know how else to lead on. We're going to talk about dragons this episode if you keep doing this. <laughs> oh. Hey everybody, welcome to the Nat One podcast, aka Nope because Nope you're not going to want to hear what we're about to have to say. I'm Pertusa. I'm Levi. And I'm Jordan. Intro you time. You said, <laughs> I know what we're doing, and just went. <laughs> you can't blame us. You guys are so bad. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, we've been doing this for a year. You know this by now. Oh, goodness. So dragon time. Um, it's dragon time. It's dragon it one. is dragon time. <gasps> yeah. My favorite part was when uh Fizzben came on the screen and said it's dragon time and dragged all over those people. <laughs> I remember when that book sold a dragillion dollars. <laughs> oh I... insert other dragon pun. <laughs> dragon pun. A oh. third thing. A third, <laughs> third unknowable. unknowable thing. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, uh, we're talking about dragons today. Let's see. Yeah, I was thinking if there's any special announcements given the time of this episode's release. Uh, tune in next week for a cool special. That's about it. Yeah, I think. Tune in like three weeks ago to see us go to Ohio Con. Yeah, <laughs> I won't be there. Yeah, 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 it's me and Levi and a few others that you've seen guest star, <laughs> but not Jordan. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Travel back in time. Sad yeah. face. Just do it. <laughs> Get in your time right. machine that everyone has. Yeah. The 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 Bear Me Jeremy. I couldn't. I've remember never what it was heard called. of that. That does not sound like a real thing to me, Jordan. That sounds so ridiculous. Right? I don't know who came up with that. 
Anyway. That was painful. Oh, God, the energy drink's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, viewers, I, I downed an energy drink before this. Anyway, we Dragon. We watched him chug it before we started we, recording. I did from start to finish, done, yeah. We said, like, ten minutes ago, we're going to talk about dragons, guys, and we've only <laughs> said the word dragons. That's the closest we've gotten to talking about dragons. And that's what this okay. entire episode is going to be. <laughs> uh, let me try. Let me try my best Dennis voice. So, so Levi, I heard there's there are dragons in this game. Is that right? Is that right? There are dragons. Uh, well, yes, actually, there are dragons. There's actually uh, multiple dragons in this game. How how many how many dragons? Well, it depends on if you're just talking about there's there's two groups of dragons. Generally, there's the chromatic dragons and the metallic dragons. You're a beautiful man. <laughs> but 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 how how many dragons is that? approximately uh, if you could put a number on it how many dragons well, really are there? if uh we want to go into semantics there's generally five types of dragons for each faction of dragons but how there's many, also dragons many, that aren't from the source books how many dragons would i need for some uh, uh so it was dedicated wham what that's an old meme that's a very <laughs> that's old a meme. very old meme wow <laughs> uh at least three Maybe four. <laughs> Probably. Maybe four. Oh, I love that meme. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, honestly, I'm not <laughs> I'm not the dragon guy. My uh you guys know especially. Uh viewers, you may know if you're if you're an avid listener. I run a Greek campaign. There was not a lot of dragons in Greek myth compared to <laughs> other monsters and stuff. <laughs> R.I.P. Kyle. <laughs> yeah, the only one they had was uh one I made, not Greek myth. Uh, spoiler. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Walmart Group is dealing currently with uh with uh Python, one of the actual original Greek myth dragons. But Ooh, anyway, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> um, I thought you meant you Python. The Walmart the Group on the podcast before. <laughs> I've said I roll another group. I just never said. I don't think I've ever said. They're I don't think they've been explained that their title is Walmart Group. It's it's called the Walmart Group because they work at Walmart. It is not yeah. derogatory yes. for off brand D and D. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not. No, no, yeah, it's because it's because of where I met them from. We, have to, uh, we should <laughs> probably clarify that it's we're not <laughs> being mean. <laughs> yeah, no, they're uh, great. They're great people. I love them. I played with them for eight months now. So yeah. <laughs> um, I'm obsessed with hearing their campaign stories, like intermittent with ours. Because they're it's playing in the same world as us. So they're playing simultaneously. That there's other people doing other stuff like halfway across the continent that we're on at the same time. So we always love hearing about what they're getting mm -hmm. up to. Wow. And, they're and occasionally we affect each other's games. Yeah. True. Um, yeah, they're dealing with Python, which is like the only Greek. Well, it's not the only. There's like two or three Greek dragons in myth, and that's about it. But Levi. Mm. Mm, we'll get to you later. Mm, yes. Jordan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you feel about dragons as as I they stay dragons. in D and D? You love them. I have been obsessed with that's the, the that was my childhood was dragons and pirates. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if it wasn't pirates, it was dragons. So yeah, the there's a lot of uh, dragon imagery in my home because my father is also obsessed with dragons. So yeah, I I dig dragons. All right. Like I said, I will get to Levi. Levi, we will get to you. What? Feel free to ask questions, but we're going to save you for a bit because I no. think you got a lot to say. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. I... Um, yes. Uh, what? Is that right? Uh, let's I hate... start with him. <laughs> How about we'll just we'll just do like a question. We'll just do a question and then like we can all answer it like, mm -hmm. like it's a podcast or something. Oh uh, my god, we should start a podcast, guys. Yeah. We're so funny. Um, <laughs> Okay, what what is what is your favorite type of dragon, or or what is your favorite color, or or what have you? Whether it's gem, Ooh. color, or metal, what's your favorite dragon? Dark. <laughs> I'm gonna have to think on this for a second. Same. I ain't gonna look them up, but I have a favorite myself picked out. If it counts, I've, I'm not sure if it counts or not. I've got to double check, but I think I know what my favorite is. Okay, they're picking. I'll answer what my favorite is, viewers. I, I think my favorite is it's it's a close one between two. If you are an avid follower of the podcast, you know I'm kind of a little freak. I'm kind of freaked up. 
Uh, I love things that don't make sense. So mine is not like, uh, you know, red dragon because it's evil. No, I'm more like, I love Dracolich. I love <laughs> undead dragon or I love the elder brain dragon, which in older editions was called the illithid dragon, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I love both of those because they're a horrible monstrosity, an abomination before God. And I love yeah. them both for that. <laughs> those are, it's a very close call for me between those two, but I think I'll go with the Illithid Dragon because it's Breath Attack, if I remember. Either did psychic damage, or I think it had the ability, I don't know if it's the current one can or if it's an old edition that could, but something about the Illithid Dragon, it, like its Breath Attack, was that it could like turn others into Illithids, love which is love. very cool. <laughs> find it. Uh, it's here somewhere. Yeah. Elder Brain Dragon. Yeah, that's the guy. Um, Breath Attack, Breath Attack, Breath Attack. Tadpole Brine Breath. Sounds sweet. It deals <laughs> psychic damage. Uh, I'll The Dragon it. kills a brine in a 120-foot line that is 15 feet wide. Each creature in that area makes a DC 22 con saving throw, taking 10d10 psychic damage on a failed save. Or half as much on a successful one. On a successful or on a success or failure, if the creature isn't a construct or undead, it becomes infested with illithid tadpoles. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, baby. And while that's infested, you take three D ten psychic damage at the start of your turn. Uh you can repeat a saving throw at the end of each of your turns, ending the effect after it succeeds on three saves. That's so cool. You're so cool. Or if you're targeted by magic that cures or restores 40 hit points, they the creature the tadpoles are killed 40. instantly. If you're reduced to zero, uh, you're dropped unconscious, and mm -hmm. when the period of unconsciousness ends, if it lasts, uh, it you the DM rolls 60 12 hours. So when it ends, if you haven't been healed by then, you transform into a mind flare. Yes, that's insanely cool to me. I love that thing. So yeah, that's my pick probably. Dracolich is also very cool, but I think it goes to that guy because it's such such a horrid abomination, <laughs> and I love it for it. You do like your abominations. I do. I love evil, terrible things. It's, they're <laughs> just my they're my style. You know, <laughs> so hot right now. <laughs> so hot right now. Do either of you have an answer now? I do. <gasps> well, Jordan, you can go then. <laughs> my, <laughs> my answer is kind of basic. I like a good old black dragon. Just because I think the acid breath attack is cool. And I think the way that they're depicted in a lot of art is really cool. Like with the horns and stuff. Yeah. Black Dragon. Pretty basic, but pretty cool. You're going to watch the movie. You're a movie watcher. I am mm. going to watch the movie. I'm very You excited. like <laughs> movies. I, I believe I have a degree in film. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, they did look very cool in the movie trailer when it was like it was running by and then there's like you could see like the sludge, the acid sludge, and then you just saw it. Whoosh. I I am very I was very excited that I was out there using a black dragon. <laughs> that was cool. All right, Levi. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, Walt. Um, I just like dragons, man. They're just a cool, dubious little fantasy creature. Now Baby Tiamat is gonna hear you and get mad if you don't pick Baby Tiamat. Uh, hmm, I have to pick one dragon. Yeah. yeah, one diamond dragon to be my favorite dragon. Yeah, I will say. Mm -hmm. I, for reasons I will probably explain later once we get to my point. Um, I really I do like Tiamat a lot. Um, and earlier. Before recent times, I probably wouldn't have cared too much about Tiamat. But after doing the stuff I've been doing recently, well, recently, within like the last half year, uh, I really enjoyed Tiamat. I really enjoy her design. I think it's cool. Um, and especially after Dragonlance came out and I read into Dragonlance a little bit and about everything that's going on with her there. I like Tiamat. I like Tiamat a lot. All right. That's fair. You know, I think King Ghidorah is my favorite Godzilla monster, so. Mm. Yeah. Well, we got a funky little bunch. We got Tiamat. An a, a, a a, a elder brain dragon. And a black dragon. Probably pretty yeah. world-destroying if they work together. Yeah. Um, this team at 99% power. 
Tiamat. This yeah. is hundred percent power. <laughs> the other two. Oh. Um. Now here's a question I want to ask both of you about because I have some mixed feelings about it. How do you feel about the whole like taxonomy of the dragons as far as like their age? Can you elaborate what you mean? Yeah, how do you feel about like the wormling, the young, the adult, mm. the ancient, and the great worm stuff? I think um, for the purpose of a species, it makes sense. Um, I'm not too sure. That's the thing is, it. I don't know, because I didn't play older editions, if it was built like that, if the lore was built that way because the game built it that way first for game purposes to have different levels of dragons, or if the game turned out that way because the lore was like that initially mm -hmm. where they were like, oh, scholars have categorized dragons into these life stages. So I'm not sure if I, I, I just think it's, I don't hold like a, oh, it's great, it's amazing. And I also don't really think it's like bad either. I just, I would be curious. I would have to do more research on the history of D&D &D to formulate more of an opinion on that. I don't know. I think mm -hmm. it's I think it's pretty interesting. I also I, I think that it's interesting just the lifespan of a dragon because I know that they do they do eventually die, but just the idea and fantasy of a creature that basically just continues living until something kills it is very interesting. Because again, dragons do die, but it's a very long span of time. And so I find the idea of like ancient dragons very interesting, kind of like vampires. How like you just know that they're hanging around and stuff is changing around them. Like it's, I, I think that it's very interesting of having that kind of entity, especially in a game like D and D, because we all know that I love learning about world building. If you have like a dragon historian that's been around since the beginning of time, I think that's very interesting to have an entity that kind of serves as that. Like they're not all knowing, but they know what's happened because it's they've been alive for so long. Yeah. It's like Xanathar. Hmm. Um, see, I <clears throat> I understand. I, I appreciate having the different levels of Dragon Ages for like player ability. Like uh, players that want to tame a dragon if they so want to try. They're like, yeah, you go, you go get a Wormling and tame it. Or um, if you have players, you want to present them a challenge, but they're like level five, make them fight a young dragon, right? I get that. Sure, sure, sure. That's good for game. I don't... I think I would want to cull one dragon type. Mm. I think I would want to get rid of adult. Mm -hmm. Or or just move them all up a little bit and get rid of great worm. And then just, like, fit them. My problem with them is, uh, in a game design sense, it's a, it's a it makes sense, but it's also kind of lazy. Mm-hmm. Because it's take the thing they do, reduce the numbers or increase the numbers as they get older. And that's yeah. it. And I don't really like that from a game design perspective. I wish if anything, there was like, like, I don't know, there was a little difference <laughs> other than just number. <laughs> as they get um, older, they get more abilities and things that flesh them out more and make the make the older ones more dangerous without just being like uh, bigger numbers for breath yeah. attack. And I feel like maybe damage. skills, like skills, should be the big factor. Because and there are several dragons in D and D lore who are known to be like powerful magic casters. Mm -hmm. So there could give yeah. them spell lists, give them things like that. I don't think there's, unless they're named, I don't think there are very many mm -hmm. dragon stat blocks that have them being innate spell casters. Mm -hmm. Or and I don't have their stat block pulled right in front of me, but I don't think this is how this works. Change wormling or young. They don't have a breath attack in so much it's a cone or line, but think of like uh, if any of you, I know neither of you have played Digimon, have you? No. no. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a move called Pepper Breath from that, which is where a dragon esque creature called Agumon shoots out a fireball from their mouth because mm -hmm. that's all they can do. It's he's too young; he can't shoot a breath of fire. He just shoots out a, and it, it'd be like a targeted attack that does like I don't know, say like two d ten fire damage if it hits you. Mm. That way, because it's still a dragon, but he's just not old enough to have a whole... You don't have control over it. Yeah, yeah. That could be yeah. interesting. It'd be a different thing, but also you could totally see how it would evolve into a breath. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. That's how I feel about the little the taxonomy. I think it's good for game design. 
but I, I would change it just a little bit. I don't like young adult and ancient all being relatively close to each other and it just being a numbered change. Mm. Uh, great worms were epic though. I don't really want to call them. That was just an offering, but great worms are cool. Yeah. They're very scary. I will say uh, there actually are life stages that are not included as stat blocks for <gasps> dragons. Cocoon? So uh, there's obviously wormlings, which are little, little baby, baby men. Mm -hmm. And then there's very young, <gasps> then young, then juvenile, young adult, adult, mature adult, old, very old, ancient worm, great worm. Okay. So there's like four or five life stages in there that aren't even being represented, but it's because like worm, that's five years. When a dragon gets five years, or not worm, wormling. When a wormling gets five years old, then it's considered very young. Hmm. And when it gets to 15, it's considered young. And then 16 to 25, that takes you to juvenile. So I can kind of understand like young and juvenile being lumped into the same category. And yeah. Wormling and Very Young being lumped into the same category. And Young Adult and Adult being lumped into the same category. Yeah, I'm very glad they don't have one for every single one of those. Yeah, no. That's, <laughs> That's why we're going to make them. No. no. <laughs> when a dragon passes the 12th century mark, its mental and physical development is finally at an end, and the dragon is at its at its peak of physical, mental, and magical powers. It gets a brain. When a dragon turns 1,200 years old, it is considered a great worm, and they supposedly can't get any better than that physically. So a 1,200-year-old dragon is equal to a 25-year-old human, typically. Yes. <laughs> yes. Peak physical know. performance. Amazing. I'm going Which to make... implies that that is like naturally. Well, I there would be several people that would be like, uh, no, actually. But if we're basing it off of like how humans work, that would imply that that's like the first third of their life. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's I'm... terrifying. <laughs> I'm going to make a homebrew artificer subclass called neurologist or neuroscientist. I'm going to probe the brain of a great worm. That's my hunt. I'm going to check dragon brains and be like, oh, look, this one's bigger. I figured it out. That's my hell. That's my character arc. I just kill dragons. Amazing. I lobotomize dragons. Well, I didn't say that part. For artifice. Mm, <laughs> more like for personal interest. Oh, okay. well, the, I'm not the publishing science, my findings. The science is an excuse so that you can continue doing it. We all know that it's a sham and you're just <laughs> doing it because you like poking dragon brains. Yeah, I was definitely like barred from posting any research papers or academic papers. They but definitely your party doesn't weirdo. know that. Yeah, exactly. That'd be a funny character concept. Has anyone done that? Has anyone out there done that? Has anyone made a character that's like scam scientist? Yeah, they're just like a real like they're a modern scientist, but they've been like barred from contributing to the academia. Anyway, <laughs> back to dragons. Um, all right. So how do you guys feel about dragons as villains, largely, broadly? It depends on how you use them. Yeah. I mean, we all know from the villains episode, go watch the villains episode, that I'm very much a fan of a very intelligent villain. And I think that dragons are usually used to fill that role because dragons are usually portrayed as quite intelligent. So mm. I like a, a conniving, scheming dragon. Ever since The Hobbit came out, it's been a big um, kind of a stereotype, I think, I guess, about dragons that their whole thing is they are these ancient and incredibly smart and prideful uh, beings, uh, as was characterized by Smaug in The Hobbit. And uh, yeah, before that, dragons in literature were usually just like animals that, were, that had the intelligence of animals. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's it's very interesting to see where that where that flip happened in the when did the hobbit come out 30s the 30s. hobbit times 30s um but yeah ever since then dragons have always been characterized as like extremely intelligent extremely extremely intelligent the top dog in any any fantasy universe that has drag not always Sometimes they aren't. Sometimes, um, Elder I think, Green. Yeah, I think. Well, 
D and D is one of the ones that kind of sticks to the Tolkien formula, where it's like mm, generally dragons are smart and intelligent and prideful beings. But there are some universes that don't do it. Like I believe, don't quote me on this because I might be wrong. The Witcher universe has an array of both where there are several types of dragons that are dumb as bricks and they're like animals. And then there are several types of dragons that are like the pretty intelligent dragons <laughs> that um, I know that like, basically there's like the dragons that we would think of as dragons that are like, Oh, they got scales and they're reptiles and blah, blah, blah. And those are the ones that are like, yeah, they're smart. And then there are dragons like worms and, what was it called? Like I don't, I don't. It's about it's like Slavic mythology creatures that all technically fall under the category of dragon. Worms and wyverns, I think, are similar in like Norse yes. mythology at least. I believe. Um, and like all of yeah, uh, yeah, cockatrice is categorized under dragons in the Witcher universe. I know that, and those are all the ones that are like, no, these are just animals that just kill things because they want to eat food. And so generally they terrorize villages and stuff and witchers go out and kill them because people need them to be dead. <laughs> it's probably been a long time since there's been a campaign start that was like, yes, help our village. It's being terrorized by a dragon, right? Because mm -hmm. like your party can't, you can't, you're not going to. <laughs> Starting at level 20, let's go kill the dragon. Let's go. <laughs> but. Well, that is the thing, though, is um, I don't think our group has ever gone up against anything younger than an adult dragon in a combat before. Because mm -mm. I know for a fact I've never given you anything younger than an adult in a combat. It's almost ended badly, but yes. <laughs> um, so I do think, like you were saying earlier, there is potential for early level, definitely not right at the get-go, but there is mm. potential for early levels to be able to fight dragons if they're younger or wormlings. Worm, honestly, Wormling, you might be able to do at level one or two, depending Probably. on how many people you have in your party. Uh, you could just use the power of numbers to overwhelm it. But yeah, like a young, I think would be a good level five to nine area, that kind of challenge for a group. Mm -hmm. I do know, uh, just from parsing through it briefly, that Rise of Tiamat and um, oh, what's the second one called? There's t It's two adventure books, but they make up the same adventure. It's Rise of Tiamat and something else. Horde of the Dragon Queen, maybe? Yeah. That one starts with dragon attack on village. And uh, players are like, oh my god, we gotta help the villagers! And then it goes from there, yeah. But also, that's considered like one of the worst source book adventures ever that oh, Wizards rip. has ever made. It's considered pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, so... Because no. we could... don't want to kill dragons, we want to befriend them. Now, I've seen like a lot of stuff where it's like, Oh, you know, it's the beginning. It's the first level. You you're in a town, and the and the people are like, "Well, there's there's word of a dragon that's been terrorizing town." It's like people, at least maybe in media or something, have an antiquated view, maybe of how the game works or something. So they're like, "Ah, oh, go fight the dragon." Level one party group of people, or like people watch media and then come in with the assumption they're going to start level one, going to fight a dragon. Mm -hmm. They go through a dungeon and fight a dragon. And you're never going to do that unless it's a freaking wormling, in which case your expectations are going to be blown because you're going to be like, I can't wait to be just like my favorite, my favorite <laughs> Bilbo and mm -hmm. and try and uh, talk to this really ancient dragon and sneak away with it and then maybe kill it somehow. And you're going to go and it's going to be like, oh, God, it's a little baby thing. And you just have to stab <laughs> it in its heart oh and kick God. it off the roof. Destroy the child. Yeah. Or, uh, or flip side. You you let them fight the dragon and play stupid games, win stupid <laughs> prizes. True, <laughs> true. I mean, I, if we're fair, I feel like Bilbo was probably like a level ten thief rogue. If we're putting it in D and D terms, who had halfling luck as a feat, because he oh yeah he probably would have he probably should have died when he <laughs> when he got to smog he was just really lucky the little guy that little was like Uber. some tj level <laughs> shit um, like... <laughs> and he also had like the dm decided to give him an artifact uh ring halfway yeah. through the adventure so he got really lucky with that too and that helped him um it's just uh i think it would be very hard in fifth edition to 
run any sort of sessions, adventure, or what have you, that's a lot like The Hobbit with with mm. Smaug. Mm. I think it'd be very hard to do well because it's either going to be the players going to make him mad and they're all going to die, or you're they're going to make him mad and you as the DM have to find a reason why you shouldn't kill them all immediately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which of course, as we know in the books, was I'm going to go kill that town because of you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was you made me mad so now here are the consequences of your actions i'm gonna kill a bunch of innocent people yeah. which does kind of fit with dragons a little bit because again the whole prideful thing and the mm -hmm. being very vain and like haughty so that could be understandable yeah. but most likely in that situation what would happen after he destroys the town is he comes back and kills the party yeah uh, they just so happened to get really lucky and there was a level 20 ranger in the town that killed the dragon because <laughs> he also had a special uh artifact arrow that was made specifically to kill dragons dragon arrow my favorite yes. D, D book <laughs> uh, oh you could also have a party that's like well we got rid of the dragon let's take some gold and go yeah yeah you don't have to wait for the dragon to come back and eat you Guys, there's a dragon left and he said he's gonna go kill all those people that means we got like a day Tom. yeah 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 let's exactly. get out of here like start we can make multiple trips and clear yeah. out a bunch of this stuff let's go wait, what about all those people yeah, leave it it's fine <laughs> they um, helped us they gave us supplies to get up here so? Is your family there? <laughs> Does your family live there? It's fine. Just it's, it's, it's probably survive. They'll be fine. <laughs> oh, speaking on that, let's go ahead and let's move a little bit to that. What well, other than all Hobbit talk? Uh, sorry to any anti Hobbiters out there. We're moving oh. on now. Uh, yeah. What is some of your favorite dragon representation in media? Other than that oh. guy, what is that old movie? Tiamat you... in the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. That doesn't count. What is yes, there? it another does. One. There's Pick a really another old one. movie that I really <laughs> liked when I was young. My grandma would let me watch it all the time because she owned it on like VCR. It's Fifty called, like, First Date, starring called... Adam Sandler. No, <laughs> my is favorite called... dragon I think it's, like, movie, The Last Dragon. Never ending no. story. Maybe it's. There's also a movie called The Last Unicorn, but I don't know if there's a dragon in it or not. The Last Dragon. No, that's a that's a movie about martial arts. Hmm. Uh, what am I thinking oh, of? Cool. There's this movie, and it's about this dude who's a knight. It's been so long since I've watched this. Oh. Oh. Basically, he like finds the very last of the dragons, mm -hmm. and. He tries to kill him at first, and then he doesn't kill him, and they become, like, good Best friends buddies. and pals, and they help each other to overthrow the bad king who's the king of the country. Um, Warden. It's a very, like, stereotypical old type of fantasy movie where it's, like, evil king, good knight main character teams up with people to take down the evil king, and he gets the princess. But as a child, I loved it. It was a good movie. And also, it was like it was not animated or anything. It was like a real movie, and it had pretty decent practical effects for the dragon. Oh, yeah. um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Once he finds that, I actually do Old have a real, uh, a real answer that's not dragon. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. <laughs> not Pete's dragon. Oh, I see it. Dragonheart. Dragon. I feel like I've heard of that. That sounds familiar. Dragonheart is a 1996 fantasy adventure film directed by Rob Cohen and written by Charles Edward Poge based on the story created by him and Patrick Reed Johnson. It stars Dennis Quaid, David Thewlis. I don't know any of these names. Oh, and Sean Connery. Sean Connery was the dragon. Lamau. David, Th is that the... I feel like I know who that is. I think that's the guy that plays Remus Lupin in the Harry Potter films... And he's also in the new Sandman show? Question mark? I may be thinking of the wrong actor. All I have to say about that is Lamau. That's really funny to me. The um, Sean Connery dragon part. I was right. David Thewlis. That is uh, Remus Lupin. And also he was just in Sandman. Hmm. That's funny. And Enola Holmes. He was in the new Enola Holmes movie. I didn't see that, but I did see him in Sandman and that was fun. He was really good in Sandman. He was. That's crazy. All right. Sounds like fun. 
did you like why'd you like the dragon you just like him because because he got along with the guy well now i'm reading the plot and remembering everything it's actually pretty interesting oh did he just Uh, get along with the guy well, basically, the dragon. So, okay, so the, there was a good king, and the good king died, and then his mm-hmm. son almost died as well because his heart was wounded. So, his mom, the queen, took him to a dragon, the dragon, and the dragon was like, I will give you my heart, and you will have the heart of a dragon so that you can continue to live, but you must promise to be a good king. And they do that. And then 12 years later, uh, Bowen. The English knight who mentored the young king is becomes a skilled dragon slayer, and the the son becomes a tyrant. Even though he was supposed to be a good king, so it's like the the mentor and the dragon have to have to take down the king because he didn't keep his promise because of the dragon heart. All right. Did yeah. the did the dragon look like dragons as we typically know them? I believe so. One second, let me see if I can find a picture. I'm curious if they had a very peculiar design or not. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. He's a little, he's, he's a little like pit bull faced. <laughs> he's a little scrunched up. Uh, I'll send effects. a picture. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send a picture to our chat so that you can see what it looks like. All right. Well, you're doing that. Now I'll let, uh, well, not I let, but Jordan, take over. <laughs> okay. So uh, my actual answer although tiamat in the dungeon of dragons cartoon is freaking awesome um my actual answer is there are dragons in the black cauldron they work for their minions of the horn king who's the main antagonist and so i thought i was up the design for those were really cool because they look like classic dragons but they're the the hand animated disney style and so they look really cool and so a close follow-up to that i also love the maleficent dragon from sleeping beauty I always love that shot of the Maleficent dragon because I, I think it's so cool. So yeah, the uh, the dragons from the Black Cauldron, I, they have a special name, but I don't remember how to pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. But if anybody's seen the Black Cauldron, they know what I'm talking about. And then the the little sidekick dude rides on one of the dragons, and it's it's cool. I love that movie so much. <laughs> All right. Apparently uh-huh. there is a second Dragonheart movie that I am not aware of called Dragonheart Vengeance. Well, look at you. You're finding something you can do as extra credit. Mm. <laughs> I am still looking for a dragon I like. <laughs> and it came out in 2020? Wow. Now that's insane. <laughs> I can also note that May has also started my love of black dragons because I just sent a picture to our chat and they look like pretty traditional black dragons. <laughs> So does the Maleficent one. Yeah. I don't know, man. I <laughs> Wait, no, I had one in mind. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, get this. I think one of my favorite dragons. Let me know if you saw this coming or not. <clears throat> my favorite dragons is named Aurelian Soul. I don't know what that is. That's okay. Just no. wait. I'm, I'm going to. Okay. Is this so, a Genshin thing? No. Levi would have known if it was Duvalin. Yeah. There's only one dragon that I'm aware of in Genshin. Um, so Aurelian Soul, his whole thing is that he is a space cosmic dragon. And in the universe mm-hmm. that he is from, he his body looks like celestial. Like his whole body is transparent. And it is comprised of uh, fibers of the universe. You can see stars in his translucent body and his hair, his mane, as it were, looks like like a collapsing star. It's like purple and yellow, like always moving. That's freaking and, cool. And he and his power is that he commands the stars. He's like in his universe, dragons are like gods. Mm-hmm. So they're not like like just like really strong people. He is literally bigger than planets, and he creates and destroys stars on whims. That's cool. Right? The universe he's in is called Runeterra, Hmm. which is the setting for the game Uh, Legends. (laughs) Get that shit out of here. Yeah. No! You said it was cool! I take it back. You shouldn't have told me it was from League of Legends. (laughs) Your honor. League of Legends. Don't don't use the League of Legends defense. Yeah, yeah. Aurelian Soul is very cool. Uh, it sounds very cool. It's a little sad because like 
League of Le- like uh, Riot Games for a long time promised, yeah, we're going to give you guys a dragon to play as, a full dragon that's going to be really cool and fit the aesthetic of playing a dragon. And they came out with Aurelian Soul, who is very cool, but he has like no dragony abilities. He they mm. went way heavy into the star stuff, right? Like he has a thing of stars that constantly orbit him in game, and if someone touches them, they take damage, which is oh, very cool. cool. Yeah. His ultimate, his ultimate ability is a big dragon blast that is like several, it looks like a dang bifrost because he just shoots out a bunch of colors, which is cool, but everyone, no one was like, I feel like a dragon while playing. <laughs> his design is also cool because he looks more like an Eastern dragon because he's got mm-hmm. like a long body, which is also very cool. Um, yeah, I was just thinking of dragons that I thought were like unique. Someone that doesn't breathe fire and isn't red. <laughs> So yeah, I pick Aurelian Soul. That's that's my favorite dragon. Yeah, is Aurelian a... Soul getting a new kit? He is. He's actually currently getting updated and reworked because they're trying to make him feel more like a cosmic dragon. Mm, I don't think they're gonna. Do I well think he with should it. breathe fire. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't think they're gonna do well. He's he's one of those ones. He was kind of a little frigged up from release, but anyway. Uh, yeah. There's also other ones. I like ones from mythology, naturally. Like mm-hmm. the ones that people said were dragons, but definitely don't look like or act like dragons at all. Like um Jormungandr, which is just a snake. Mm, snake. Or uh Fafnir. He, he was a dragon. He was a well, he was a dwarf dragon, but still. He was a snake. dragon. Yeah. Or uh Serpent. Um, yeah, Ouroboros. Snake. Yeah, sn- yeah snake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> They really thought snakes were dragons back then. I don't think they knew the difference. I yeah. The, what else would you call that? There's the ongoing debate though. The Leviathan from the Bible is a dragon. Yeah. Can we motion to change? Can we wait? Not change. Can we make a new system called Snakes and Ladders? Please. You have to delve through ladders and fight snakes. I thought it Which... was delve through snakes and fight ladders. No. Well, maybe, but frankly, I'm just saying fighting snakes while having to be on a ladder sounds way more difficult to me, but that's my pick. Any more dragon thoughts out there? I do have to say, I think it's really interesting in storytelling just with the concept of dragons in general. Like, I really like the fact that in every, in like, in most of the mythologies and storytelling records that we have around the world, every culture has some kind of dragon. Which mm-hmm. I just think is really interesting, considering the the like vast number of different mythologies and stories that there are in the world. That at some point, people just continued to come up with dragons, and that's it. It appears, it pops up in every almost every mythology, and I just think that's fascinating. Yeah, it's because they were real, but. Well, yeah, but <laughs> what's that documentary? That's like the the fake documentary about dragons. And it starts in, like, prehistoric times. What do you mean, fake? Uh, The Land Before Time. No. <laughs> Wait, let me Kong find this, Kong Skull too. Island. Dragon. Documentary. Scooby-Doo Zombie Island? No. <laughs> Is Scooby-Doo this, this one's the last <laughs> dragon? Wait. That one this Disney movie that the sucked. last dragon. 2004 film. Oh. The last dragon, known as Dragons, a fantasy made real in the United States and also known as Dragon's World in other countries, is a 2004 British docu-fiction. Ooh. It posts Ooh. a speculative ev- evolution of dragons from the Cretaceous period up to the 15th century and supp- suppositions about what dragon life and behavior might have been like if they had existed and evolved. It uses the premise that the ubiquity of dragons <laughs> in the world mythology suggests that dragons could have existed. They are depicted as scientifically feasible species of reptile that could have evolved similar to the depiction of dragons in the Dragonology series of books. The dragons featured in the show were designed by John the Civic. I forgot I about that. the Dragonology books. I remember that, but no, I hate that. Just don't Those ever cool. say that again. What, the uh, docu-fiction? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant British. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> that was I gotta gross. watch this again. I always liked this movie as a kid. There you go. And I'll tell you, my favorite part of Harry Potter was the dragon. That is it was a narrated cool part. by Patrick Stewart. That's why the fourth book's always gonna be my favorite book. <laughs> that and I also like uh, tournament arcs. So mm-hmm. God damn it. 
I knew I was going into anime whenever I read the fourth book, and I was like, this is my favorite. Political intrigue that came afterwards? Get that out of here. And honestly, honestly, spoilers for Goblet of Fire, but the fact that Harry and Cedric never got an actual fair fight was kind of upsetting to me. I wanted them to fight yeah. first. I wanted them to fight, but that's what fan fiction's for, I guess. Although every fan fiction I read about them finishing their fight does not end in a fight. But it usually has the use of wands, though. I True. hate this. I... <laughs> <laughs> then there was that one with the dragon involved. I yeah. <laughs> you know, our next Y'all are being very careful. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to. If you really like our content, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on YouTube, and look for us on Spotify. If you'd like to see us continuing to do more fun projects in the future, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find our page linked in the description above all of our other social media links. And finally, if you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and check out some more skit-based content and things like that, check us out on Twitter and TikTok. Links in the description. And hey, thanks.